As of this moment, we have been reporting on yet another little mini rally off a new lower low for many benchmark indices. So all this comes as we continue to see the big debate around what's happening with the US dollar. Let's take a look at this now from a, a technical perspective with our regular guest here on IGTV. It's Serge Berger from thestudytrader.com from Zurich. Serge, it's great to catch up with you again on our monthly chat. Uh, when we've been talking before, we've been talking about uh, this sort of bear market rally we had in the, the NASDAQ and the DAX and other major global markets. And then, as you rightly predicted, this pullback. And we've seen new lower lows in many markets. If we strip out the FT100, which is a little bit of a different sort of case. But we've seen these new lower lows. How does all what's happening in the market at the moment tie into each other? Hi, Jeremy. I think it's um, mostly due to the strong dollar. And we you know, we could even extrapolate some of the stuff in the gilt market from the past uh, week or so uh, due to the strong dollar. So I brought along a chart here um, that maybe we could bring up. And uh, what I took here is just two very simple uh, assets. One of them is the euro dollar currency pair, which is the green and red candlestick pattern. And you can see how that topped out in uh, January 2021. Um, and then basically it's been moving lower. Equities, I took the DAX here. We could overlay the S&P 500 here as well. It's the same chart. You can see how they are equities, and this is German equities, are correlating lower with euro dollar. And even the recent bounce you can see uh, in equities was due to weaker uh, weaker dollar, meaning stronger euro the past you know week or so. So to me, this really comes down to uh, what is the dollar going to do? There's an old saying in macro macro trading, which is, you know, if you can get the dollar right, you can get many other things right. And I think it holds particularly true at this juncture. So quite simply, if we were to see the dollar finally stop this, this, this um, crazy ascent that's had, then we would likely be able to see an easier relief rally in, in equities, uh, whether that's the DAX, whether it's U.S. equities uh, or other risk assets. For that matter. So, so fundamentally, if I could just quickly steer the conversation around to the fundamentals, what is it you need to see to support the technical analysis to suggest that there might now be a recovery in both the euro against that weaker dollar and other currencies, of course, and so the equity markets? Because the Fed still seems to be on this trajectory of higher interest rates. Yeah, very much so. So, historically speaking, the Fed has been the loudest or the most hawkish just before they essentially finish their operations of tightening. Um, and quite frankly, you can go back to less, what, like three quarters of a year ago, maybe a touch more when the Fed was, you know, pounding the table on transitory. And then, you know, they got really loud on that. And then, of course, they had to cave. So, you know, this is not about uh, speaking badly about the Fed. It's just observations of, you know, of history. So essentially what... Um, where this kind of lines up with, with I guess, fundamentals or just you know economic gravity, is uh, what I'm likely, what I'm going to expect is for particularly the Federal Reserve to be uh, becoming less hawkish. That doesn't mean they're going to start cutting rates right now. The Fed fund futures market is pricing in rate cuts in May of 2023. I'm not expecting rate cuts, but just a little bit less hawkishness. That could that could come in the form of recognizing global carnage, which they did, by the way, with um the gilt market last week, that could be them offering more dollar swap lines. You know, there's a shortage of dollars, which is essentially the big problem with everything here is shortage of liquidity. So um, anything like that, and I would expect that to happen at some point over the next uh, two to three months. So maybe still this year. And um, I think that could be, uh, the market's going to sniff that out. And as soon as they sniff that out, the equity market is going to rally sharply. Uh, but then at some point, as we get into next year, first quarter, we're going to see economic reality kick in again. And I think we'll see more risk off for a period of time. Mm. When, when we were talking before we went to air on this, uh, you, you were keen to talk about the US 10-year yield. How does all this weave into this picture that we've got? Does the, does, does the, dollar, does the dollar dog wag the uh, yield tail? Or is the yield driving what's happening here? Yeah, so I mean, this is an argument that you know <laughs> we we could probably spend a, a week on talking, but 
I think what's really more important to understand here in the bigger sense is that this is very much um, a macroeconomic environment where whether it's the dollar moving yields or yields moving the dollar, it's 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 this it's this, this dynamic is, is is at play. So the dollar is going to get is going to get weaker as soon as the Fed acknowledges that they made pause or do something to the extent that I said before, um, and yields will do the same. They will start to ease off a little bit. So you know, again, there's staunch arguments out there of the dollar wagging yields or vice versa. Um, I'm a bit more in the camp of the dollar being the, the culprit here, which is also how we started talking here a few minutes ago. Um, but again, you know, that's a tough one to to really nail down. The, the, the graph you got up there, that, that is what it's a very, very long term picture, is it, of the 10 year US Treasury yield? Yeah. So this is an interesting chart. So basically what we are seeing here is 10 year Treasury yields on a monthly chart. And a lot of people are arguing for a breakout here. Well, depending on how I, how creative I want to be on, 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 uh, on drawing my lines here, you know, technical analysis is always, the question is always, does it work because it works or does it work because everyone's looking at the same levels? Um, but we technically had a breakdown below, below the, the range as well because of COVID. So it's really not that surprising to see an overshooting on the upside as well. What's really notable here, Jeremy, is that if we were to add something really simple like a relative strength uh, index here, let me quickly do that, you would see that we've, we're actually record ever, like ever, ever overbought on our relative strength basis in bond yields. So that's the relative strength index at the bottom here. You can see we've never been this overbought. And the only two other times we were anywhere near this with the RSI being somewhere near 70, we had yields go from, um, what was it at the, at the time? It was like, it was like 14% down to seven. <laughs> and then from uh, five or six to ultimately almost nothing. So we're more of a bot ever than ever right now. So which is also why I'm thinking that at some point soon, we're going to start to see a little bit more dovishness out of the Fed. Again, not an outright flip of cutting rates, but, but something like that. And that should be supportive, I think, for a risk on rally in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And then you're talking about the economic reality kicking in again for the first quarter next year. Let's just um, pull it, put in some individual charts now as to what's happening. Can, can we analyze this euro dollar trade a little bit more? Because uh, yesterday we were within, I think, a couple of ticks of going back up to parity. This this uh, euro strength story against that weaker dollar uh, playing out really nicely against that one to one level. Um, we are down a touch today. Are you happy buying euro dollar at these levels? In other words, selling down dollar further? Or, or technically, do you want something else to happen before you start to persuade yourself that it is the right time to sell heavily into this dollar rally we've had? Yeah. I'm actually a seller of euro dollars this morning. Right. Um, I, I I don't think it's over just yet. I think you know when I say fourth quarter rally, I'm really looking, and this is threading the the needle a little bit. We had a long talk with clients yesterday. Um, you know, if we if we see a risk on rally in the fourth quarter, historically speaking, that started to take place towards the back end of October. We do have midterm elections as in the U.S. to deal with this year as well, by the way. And of course, we have a shooting war, unfortunately, still. But I, I'm more of a seller of your dollar this morning. I think we need a little bit more time. Uh, we also have to get past uh, non-farm payrolls on Friday, CPI next week. Uh, so I think we have a potentially a few more sort of inflationary data prints. So I'm a seller of your dollar this morning, um, maybe for the next couple of weeks. But the further we get into October, the more I want to be buying your dollar, meaning essentially short dollars, if you will. Yeah. Let's take a look at the same sort of uh, daily chart for DAX, because um, this all leads in, as you've said, to what's happening with the, the, the DAX play. Um, again, what where, where are you taking this? Do you think I mean, you're not looking for a new lower low then, I guess? So I'm not necessarily looking for meaningful new lower lows in the DAX. I, you know, I think it's, it's also just like a yeah, like, like the Nasdaq, we're getting yeah, we're down we're down almost thirty percent. Call it twenty seven or so. I'm not quite sure it's another major leg lower. This this does unfortunately hang in the balance a bit more of the the um, Russia's war in the Ukraine than um, than maybe say an S and P five hundred, which is more tech weighted. But we could we see a retest of what we saw, you know. We could we could go something like that. I think that's possible. But we also have to understand that bear markets, the longer we're in them, and we've now been in a bear market for many, many months, 
the more difficult it gets to be short and the 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 less it takes for us to have basically a, a reversal that is really going to hurt until we wake up to the fact. So I want to be much more cautious on the short side here um, from a bigger picture perspective. Tactically, yes, I think there is a we're probably already overbought very, very near term. You know, it can be revisit 12,000. It's entirely possible. But I do want to be aware that the fourth quarter does tend to be actually the best quarter of the year as well, bear market or not. Yeah, the same for the NASDAQ then. You're talking about tech stocks. And as we know, as you said correctly, that the S&P is now tech, more tech orientated. But let's take a look at the NASDAQ because that yeah. is the, the real tech behemoth. It is. It's it, it, it very much is. So on the NASDAQ, the way I look at it is I, I, I see this long-term chart, and I'm just going to quickly make it larger so, every, so everyone can see this. And we're kind of nearing the lower end of this trading range here. I think uh, it was off 30% or so, the NASDAQ, let me remember. Yeah, 35 actually, uh, give or take. So that's historically speaking pretty notable. Of course, there's the internet bubble to contend with, which was a bit of a bit of a different beast. But here too, I mean, I just I just want to be careful not to get caught on the short side when we have been in a bear market for this duration. Is there a risk of major contagion and blowups? Yes, but I think that's more tail risk. And you know, one could buy some puts just being protected for that in case that happens. But I think the base case here has to be that we see some sort of risk on move in the fourth quarter, followed by a little bit more risk off. Uh, so risk on, meaning rally in the fourth quarter, risk off in the first quarter. And then I think the deeper we get into 2022, the more we really want to be buying with both hands on, on the risk asset side. Mm. Interesting. Okay, look, Serge, you've got to leave it there. But thanks for joining us for our regular update on what's happening with these uh, febrile markets at the moment as we continue to monitor some of the fundamentals and what it means uh, for our charts in technical analysis. That's Serge Berger from SteadyTrader.com. If you want to catch up with Serge, just uh, do so on his website or through his Twitter handle.